Okay, so class, so let's continue with the chapter of people as resource. So in the last class, we have seen how unemployment is further divided into urban and rural, disguised and seasonal unemployment, industrial and educational uh, unemployment, and we have seen what's the meaning of unemployment that if a person is willing to work and he is not getting a proper job, then that is considered as an unemployment. Okay. So now let's move on. Seasonal unemployment. It happens when people are not able to find jobs during some months of the year. During some months, they are not getting proper job. For example, we can say a labor, a daily wages labor is working in a construction site that means working in a major building contract or something like that. Now, during rainy season, the work is not there. That will be considered a seasonal unemployment. If the rain starts from June, June, July, August, there will be no work for that person for some month of the year. Otherwise, means any year. So that type of unemployment is known as seasonal unemployment. Now, disguised unemployment. In this case, people appear to be employed. They appear to be employed. Some work requires the work of any, only few people, but engages more people than it needs. The extra workers are called disguised unemployed, and this usually happens with agricultural plants. Disguised, what is the meaning of disguised? Whatever is seen, it's not there. That is the meaning of disguised. So people are working there. But there is no need of them. Within a farm, there is need of only five people there. But there are ten. So the remaining five, they are coming under disguise and employment. They can of course go for some other job. They can of course help the economic stability of their family by going for some other job. But sometimes what they do, as they are a part of their family or they are interested only in this agriculture activity, they take part there. So they are not going outside for any other work. So instead of five, there are ten. But the production is safe. It is not the matter that ten people are there, so the production is getting any no. The production is still safe. And that is known as disguised unemployment. Educated unemployment. It is more common in urban areas. Many educated youths are not able to find a job. They are called educated unemployed. That means they have done engineering, they are MA, they are PhD, they are having a good qualification, well qualified. But there is no facility for them to show their skills. There is no job offers. There is no, what we say, interviews for them. They are not getting any type of, uh, what we say, uh, organization or schools or universities asking for them. So what has happened to their degrees? Still with them, they are not able to use it in a productive way. They are not able to use their skills. That is known as educated unemployment, where it happens mostly in urban areas where people are most, you know, they have gone to most wonderful universities and all. But there is no job in the market, there is no job in the economy. They are known as educated unemployment. Next comes measures. What are the measures? Controlled population, skill education, proper health, and knowledge of market. For what? For using people as a resource. Having a controlled population, having a proper skill education, having a proper health, and knowledge of the market. Then only we can be a good resource of our country. Now, what is impact of human resource on growth? Efficient labor increases the productivity with the help of latest technology. As we know, everywhere competition is there. Latest technology is used. Why? Because the population is rising, competition is there, people's wants are increasing. So, uh, an efficient labor who is increasing its productivity with the help of latest technology. He is giving his proper skill in growth. Human resource increases the specialization of a person in a particular product. Physical capital formation. 
increase in demand. They are all coming as impact of human resource on growth. If they have increasing demand, then they are able to use their skills. They are giving their skills in the production facilities. So, impact of human resource on growth takes physical capital formation, increasing demand, efficient labor means increasing the productivity, and human resources, which increases the specialization of a person in a particular product. So, this is the end of the chapter. So, let's have a fast recap of the whole chapter. So, we have started with the definition of people as resource. That what is resource? That means the goods and services which is used in the process of production is known as resource. And why people is considered as resource? Because if people is not there, what will land be? What is the building going to be? How are machines going to be introduced? For each and everything, if a land has to be used for agriculture, people are needed. If a building has to be used as a factory, person is needed. If a machine has to be on, used, switch on, switch off, then you need to be work for that a person is needed. How to work the, make that machine work? If there is some problem, how to clear it, how to repair it? Using latest technology to bring more machines. Who are going to do all these things? They are we, we people. So we are considered as an important resource. Then we have seen that what is human capital? Doctors, teachers, engineers, laborers, tailors, whoever is giving their part of skill in the production, in the productivity, in the growth of economy is known as a human capital. We have seen what are resources which is used in the process of production. We have seen the three important sectors which are playing the role in our economy as primary, secondary and tertiary. Then here we have seen what is natural resource and human resource, where it is considered as renewable resources, which is which can, can be renewed and reused on renewable resources, which has to be very taken very care because we cannot renew or reuse it. But whichever resources is there, we have to be very careful while using so. We have seen what is human resource, that people as resource, which is referring to your country's working people. Who are giving their ability or who are giving their skills in productive things and showing their abilities is known as human resource. Then we have seen what is human capital and physical capital. Then we have seen what is human capital, where skills are there, roles are there, people use their roles to show their abilities. But for this human capital, there is proper investment to be needed. Which are those investments? Investments like education, health, training. If we give this input, then only we are going to get a proper human capital. Then we have seen what is physical capital, which is referred to as a manufactured asset that is applied in production, like machines, buildings, vehicles, land and all. And how will they put, come together? With the help of human capital. And then we have seen the economic activities like primary sector, secondary sector, tertiary sector. And what is primary sector? It is taking the first step towards production. The raw material which is taken into consideration, where from the beginning, agriculture is there, forestry is there, animal dispensary is there, fishing is there, poultry farming is there. All these are considered as the primary activity. Then we have seen what is secondary sector, where industries are there, factories are there, whichever raw material comes from the primary sector, they directly go to secondary sector, where they are refined, they are, they are made into packets, they are made into finished products, which is it can be consumed by a person. Then it goes from there to the tertiary sector, which is transportation, banking is there, communication is there, Insurance is there, education is there, health is there, service is there. So it is also considered as service sector because they are giving service to others. And that is coming under tertiary activities. 
then we have seen difference between market and non market market means which is then for pay for profit that is known as market non market means it is not done for any pay or profit it is done for self consumption that why the name is non market then we have seen the causes quality of population education health and employment we have seen how the quality of population can be done better by giving proper literacy rate to the population by increasing the life expectancy rate by decreasing the infant mortality rate by giving education to the population giving them knowledge not only theoretical practical vocational schemes are introduced by the government so that the people get proper education and this education is going to help in the growth of economy sarva shiksha abhiyan is there where elementary education should be compulsory for the children so that they get proper knowledge proper education which are they don't know the teacher is teaching them out of the world they are learning things outside the world what is happening they are learning all these things come from a proper education then we have seen the graphs which we see based in india then how is health important if health is there then everything is there health is considered as wealth so government has started health centers in so many villages so that whenever people are facing any problem they don't have to rush to any cities they can take their all problems solved from health centers health center is very much important for small children because whenever they are having any kind of disease and or sometimes they are not able to parents are not able to save their children but they must have not got medical attention at the same point so health is very much necessary nutrition level should be proper if our nutrition level is proper then only we can fight the illness if are having a proper immune system then only we will be healthy then here we have seen how doctors nurses personnel hospitals have been increased from 1961 to 2010 how the increase has happened that means it is showing a good health infrastructure over the years then we have seen what is employment when a person is able willing to work in whatever they just he uh, is getting and he is not able to find a job then we consider that that situation is known as unemployment but in unemployment also there are different types of it urban and rural we have divided into this type and seasonal industrial and educational unemployment seasonal means in some parts of the month earlier they are not getting job disguise means they we feel that they are working but that is not showing any type of increase in the productivity educated means they are educated but still they are not able to find any kind of job that are the different types of unemployment then we have seen the measures of criminalization proper health should be there skill education should be given controlled population should be there they should have the knowledge related to the market and then we have seen the impact of human resource on growth of our economy as efficient labor increases the productivity with the help of latest technology human resource increases the specialization of a person in a particular product physical capital formation is then increase in demand all these things plays an important role in the impact of human resource on growth so by the end of this chapter we are learning that as a human being we have to be a asset for other things we should be constructive idea we should use our productive skill and ability to increase the economic development of our country rather to be an liability or a destructive mind that should not happen people should be educated should be healthy should have proper skills should have practical skills so that they can put forward their skills and abilities which will become a pillar which is supporting our economic growth of our country which is helping our country to become a developed country right so that's all thank you